I think savings as a strategy worked. It did because I remember initially when savings, when committee started savings, um, on, on two levels. There was the level to which it was collectivizing and bringing people together to one voice in a settlement. They used to say, we save because where our money is is where our heart is. And true to the fact is that it used to bring people and glue them together. And that's where their strategies used to come from. So that worked as a political tool as well and as an organizing tool. But then also an important use of, or, or, I mean, an, an important role that savings played was the fact that the initial, initially, I remember, communities were never able to access banking services. So that was, that was a role that savings played. People were able to save within a collective and put all their money in the bank. And, and that was revolutionary in, in being able to, to, to have a confidence that I bank with this bank through my savings scheme. But then over time, uh, well, also the banking sector changed and you now started looking for, started devolving to where people are. Um, so savings did work. And I remember, and probably somebody has already mentioned the beautiful story of toy market, being able to save it and uh, influence a product of a, of a bank. There was also a numeration. Um, the numeration was a strategy that worked. Again, it was also a political strategy that worked because it was through the, the politics of being able to get an enumeration going and being able to have a successful and complete an enumeration. It was never easy. There was a lot of mobilization that needed to be done. There was a lot of resistance that you needed to go past. Um, and therefore, there's a way that enumeration just was able to transcend and comp out the different levels of power. Even communities themselves began to understand, oh, this is, what, this is how we are, this is how complex our settlement is. And I guess there's also the part that enumerations as a strategy worked in being able to consolidate data about settlements. Because for the longest, government never had any form of data. I remember Jack and I used to go to, and a few colleagues used to go to, for instance, the Survey of Kenya, where they have all these maps of, cadastral maps of everywhere. You would find all the information in, in government has only of formal areas, but not of informal areas. So the, the many years that we invested in collecting data, whether government will appreciate it or acknowledge it or not, there's quite a bit of data that we made available. And when they started being more keen on working on informal settlements, there's a lot of data that, that they relied that we had collected. Again, even if they will not acknowledge it it's okay but there's a there's a basis to which they started and they started on information that communities themselves had gathered I mean I just find that very profound that communities in, in I mean the Federation in their in their struggle has been so uh, has maintained their fidelity to to that process that we are being evicted because we are not known to a place where they collect so much data and then they take to government I remember we, we used to go to government with Jack, and, and the question that we would be asked by the planners is, how do we trust your data, right? So well, within the formal tables, they will reject the data. But when they go back to their offices to work on data, that same data they were questioning, the same data they're going to use. But then we learned that we're not, I mean, the, the idea is not to look for, we're not looking for them to say good things about the data. The fact that they use that data is already good enough. That worked, enumeration worked at that professional level, political level, academic, uh, academic friends as well. A lot of the information that they've also used to understand communities or even to build up and get their own data has been founded on just that data that was first collected by communities. So there's, there's a way that Federation has entered a space that nobody had ever entered. And that's because it was what their struggle was about. And we celebrate the fact that they have remained and maintained that fidelity that we were collecting this data for this purpose and that is what it has been till today. So many other innovations have come. GIS came and found us still collecting data, but it was just 
to strengthen that data that was already existing and make it easier for communities to articulate themselves. And therefore, every other tool that has come has come to strengthen that, that value that they first placed when they did. Advocacy as a tool is, is intertwined with savings and enumeration because then part of why we did the things that we were doing, we were doing them to elevate a voice and a voice of the people. And therefore that was elevated through the data that communities collected and through the savings that were able to allow them to achieve housing in Huruma, um, buy land for the communities that are bought land. House modeling as well. In the years where we did house modeling, um, I also I used to find that so powerful. <laughs> so house modeling is, I guess, where communities envision the kind of housing that they would want to live in, and by the time they 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 have they're building a a real house model using either cloth and timber because it's it's very very temporary. By the time they are getting there, they've already met, agreed and disagreed and agreed and come to a conclusion with the help of an architect that this is the size of a house that can fit all of us who want to live on this same space. So the house modeling process is also, I guess, a tool that works because it, it begins to allow people to conceptualize space and conceptualize or bring, bring their dreams to, not from a self, selfish perspective, but to a more community perspective. Because when we start dreaming, communities will be like, oh, I want a five-bedroom house, I want a swimming pool, a tiny swimming pool. Um, but then when, when you bring communities to a place where they're able to understand the, the relationship between the data they've collected and the space that they have, then you begin to understand, oh, okay, the only space I, I, I have to enjoy is this space. So I need to then bring down my dream in a way that accommodates my brothers and sisters and the rest of the community. So when, when they build this live house model, I used to find this very fascinating, that we'd go, communities would go to the local government and they'd say, we want you to come and launch this house model. Remember, these are the same guys who refuse, were trying to refuse them to do enumeration. Well, the same guys were refusing to come and agree to different activities that are going on. But when they see this house model, they want to be a part of it. They want to come and officially cut the tape and it's so prestigious. But what they don't know is that they're actually signing up. They're signing up to, a, to an upgrading. But the fact that they've cut this tape, they basically, they're launching that up, they're upgrading. So after that, there is no way you're gonna say, uh, I don't approve of this upgrading because you've already, you've already been a part of a part of a ceremony that is the beginning of an upgrading. Even for professionals and for technocrats that are in government, house models were powerful in being able to also reshape their thinking about how they see space. It's in them entering that model, being able to enter, understand that this is where the kitchen will be, this is where the living room is going to be, they're going to go upstairs, that's where the bedroom is, another upstairs, another bedroom. They just change, the, their perspective changes from looking at this space as it can't fit anyone, they can't fit everyone, to a place where communities are beginning to tell them, look, if you allow us this space, this is what we can do. So I, I, I don't think that there's any government person who ever came for a house modeling launch who left that community dif uh, the same, rather. The way they came, they always left differently. It, it's, it's just... You can't leave that image. You can't leave that image of this is actually how the settlement can be if it's organized. And the, the, the person who's limiting that whole progression to happen is me as a government official. So you, you, you end up going to your office different. You, you, you cannot not agree for that upgrading to happen. I always found the, the, the tools that the Federation used to be so powerful. They, they, they have a, a very salient and subtle way of challenging intellects of government people. Governmental professionals will not acknowledge that they are being taught and they are being schooled by communities. But that's the role of federation, is, is, is to have a very subtle way of being able to change a conversation and a dialogue and change it in such a subtle way 
that it's 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 almost like it's actually non it's active non violence. So you're you're not forcing somebody to accept. You're just exposing them. Just see, just 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 come, just come and see this model. That's all. But when you live there, even though you don't acknowledge, you will still agree, and something in your soul will just make you know that these people need what they need you to say yes. They need you to approve to what they want to do.